did, but having grandchildren really was a catalyst because I'd be going to Villawood Detention Centre on, you know, on Monday and there were a lot of children there, you know, babies that were born there. The mothers would give birth at the hospital and then come straight back in. And then the next day I'd be looking after my grandchildren, you know, and, you know, they were born into freedom, you know, to a family with not a lot of money but with freedom. And, you know, the parents were secure. And it just seemed so wrong. There was such a discrepancy between my grandkids and these refugee children. So really that's how it all started. Um, so we're talking to people, we're giving out flyers of information on, we have petitions, um, people want to know more. So that's about education. Plus, um, you know, as a group of grandmothers we do have some, we do have a bit of a brand there, we do have respect, so people do listen to us. Um, the other things that we do is letter writing to Prime Ministers and that happened the Prime Minister and David Coleman, the Minister of Immigration, our own MPs. So we have every, well, sometimes monthly, sometimes two months, we have guest speakers at our meeting, which is in Pitt Street, um, where it's an education thing. A lot of our grandmothers say they need to know more. And rather than just sending out fact sheets, yeah. We've had. Um, We've had someone from the hospital who's been looking after the children at home. Yeah. Who came from the Somebody room. a whistleblower on the room. Yeah. So, um, so that's an educational thing that we do. Um, that's open to anyone, although it's not widely advertised. Um, we give talks to different groups. We get invited. I gave a talk to Sydney Boys Grammar. Yeah. The other thing we do is. We always participate in, in marches and yeah. rallies and things like that. So, And the fact that we always wear purple and we carry purple banners and when we've got a lot of banners, we have become very well known. And I've noticed when you're at a vigil um, or on a rally, you often get people coming up saying, great work, love what you do, you know, yeah. I know about you, seen your website, because we've got a, a great website. Mm -hmm. So. We're becoming sort of... Yeah, the social media is really mm. important. We've mm. got the Facebook yeah. and the website and on, uh, we've got some amazing people um, doing the website, YouTube, started Twitter YouTube, and um, yeah. Instagram. I think, you know, really one of the most effective ways um, of advocating is one-on-one, is -on -one, but you can't, you just can't do that with everybody because it's such an enormous job. But, but the one-to-one -one constant, I mean, all of the grandmothers talk to people and bring up the subject and and once people actually hear some stories about how it how it is for refugees and what children are going through and what children are suffering that's when they start to say I didn't realize it was that bad I didn't know that it was like that now there's yeah, enough sure. stories in the press particularly when I mean there were stories in the press when when they were trying to bring young children here and the 11 year old boy who tried to commit suicide three times and you know the government didn't want him to be brought here for treatment those things were in the press I think a lot of people are a bit you know would rather not know but once you talk to them you know and that's what happens a lot at the vigils we have little business cards and, and it gives all the details and the addresses and things but if you can talk to them often you get a really good response don't mm. you of people sort of saying I didn't understand that and I'll mm -hmm. take you information away and look it up and we get members constantly don't we yeah. yeah I think we we've achieved a lot mm -hmm. it's not enough and we'll keep working but I think we've actually achieved quite a bit I mean I, I have a personal feeling that maybe a year ago or two years ago we held what we called a freedom ride and it was all the grandmas from all around Australia met in Canberra and we had a car trip into town with all the purple colours and whatever. We all met with um, members of parliament and then at the end of the day, all the grandmas just happened to be in the lobby of Government House with our t-shirts inside out because you can't wear, can't wear um, logos and things like that. 100 grandmas standing in the lobby and somebody had changed the words to the song We Shall Overcome to free the children the, the yeah. children will be free we shall overcome children will be free and they all sang 
and it was just the most it's I think there's a copy of it on the website yeah, it was one of the right. most moving things and there were security guards kind of going <laughs> around the outside but what can they do to 200 old people I, and it was only a week or a couple of weeks after that that Dutton announced that they would be releasing all children from from um, detention Yeah, we have hope. We always have to have hope. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be very difficult with the current government who set up these conditions mm -hmm. and you haven't changed and a minister who hasn't changed and the minister who's been appealing these, you know, decisions to bring gravely ill children here. It's going to be very hard work. But I think that just makes us more determined, mm. doesn't it?